Hello everyone, this is me Arijit with a very new video and in this video I am going to show you how you can create an AI virtual painter using Python with the help of Raspberry Pi or any other computer or PC you have. So what is a virtual painter AI base? So basically it's like you are going to just have a camera and in front of the camera you can actually draw using your finger. So whatever you will draw using your finger will be, will be painted in the canvas. Okay, and what is the advantage of building the project in a Raspberry Pi? So basically, if you build it in a Raspberry Pi, you can actually connect a Raspberry Pi with any display. And then using a very small device, you can actually build a virtual painter. So and then doesn't matter how much big the display is, you can actually paint on the display using your fingers. Okay, and even if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, you can also run the same project on your computer on your PC. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to explain you how the AI based virtual painter is going to work. I will explain you the codes. I will show you how to install it in your PC or Raspberry Pi. And also if you have to modify it for your personal project or whatever, like if you want to modify it and want to add something else, how even you can do that, how you can modify the code, all that things I'm going to show in this video. And also this is how the demo will look like. I'm not a very good, I'm not that very good in drawing, but yes, this is how you can actually draw. And you can see it's very simple. You can change colors in this way. You can choose different colors. So it's very seamless here. Okay. Okay, guys. So, and another thing is I'm going to use Raspberry Pi in this video, Raspberry Pi 4. And, but yeah, the similar setup you can do in your computer also. And I'm going to use HP uh, W300 webcam, but you can use any other webcam. But it's better if your webcam, the quality of webcam is good in that case, obviously, as because obviously, as it is going to uh, detect your hands, if the quality of the webcam will be good, obviously, the overall application will work better. So that's it. Now let's get started. Okay guys, so now I'll show you how to uh, like install the whole project and run it in your Raspberry Pi or in your computer. Now I'm going to show it for Raspberry Pi, but for your computer, you can do in the very similar way. And next I'll explain you the whole project and then finally I'll show you the demo. Okay, so let's get started. Now, if you are using Raspberry Pi, you need to install a Raspberry Pi OS. Now here, one very important thing is, as we are going to use media pipe, you need to use uh, basically the Raspberry Pi 64 bit OS. So you go to a Raspberry Pi Imager, okay. There you go to choose your OS. From there you go to Raspberry Pi OS other, and there you have to install Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. Okay. Don't install a 32 bit media pipe. Doesn't work that well in 32 bit. Okay. So just go for the 64 bit. Okay. Install this one. Next you can choose the storage, and you can do the Wi-Fi setup from here, and you can write it. So I already have did it, so I'm not going to do it again. So I already have connected this with my VNC. So this is my Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 64 bit. Now here, as I'm using a webcam, I don't need to like uh, enable any Raspberry Pi camera, or, uh, like Raspberry Pi camera or anything. I'm using a webcam, but in case you are using a Raspberry Pi camera, uh, in that case, you have to do the other setups also, okay. But yeah, I'm using webcam and if you're using webcam, that will be easier for you too. So now next thing is obviously we have to install the libraries. Now for that, you go to the GitHub repo. There you will get what libraries you need to install. Now as it's a 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, installing OpenCV is very easy. So you just need to write pip install OpenCV Python. Next, you, you have to install NumPy. Next, you have to install MediaPipe. Now, after installing these three things, okay, you can test the code. Okay, so currently, as per the latest version of MediaPipe, which I'm using, I got an error with this like protobuf. So if you're getting any kind of error similar with the protobuf, in that case, what you have to do is you have to uninstall protobuf and you have to install this version of it. Okay, if you are getting the error, so first you install these three packages and you check if you are getting any protobuf related error, in your Python code, then only install these two things. Okay. And then you can just run the code. So this three, this only these three libraries you need to install. And if you're getting error, you have to also have, have to install the protobuf 3.20 version. Okay. Now I already have installed the things. So now I can simply clone the repo. Okay. So I'll simply first clone the repo uh, in my Raspberry Pi. So here, so I'll go to desktop. And here I already have it, so I'll just remove it. Okay, I just give me a moment. Okay. 
okay so now i can just do git clone okay. so i can just paste it and i'll have the i'll have the folder now i can get inside it and i can do ls and you can see i have just this canvas.py okay now before we can run the code uh, or we can actually run the code and i can show you a small demo and then we can actually discuss about the, the how the code is actually working so let me just give you a very small demo okay so as you can see this is how it looks like so there are two windows now one window we can see this is you can see me and there is this window this is a blank window there we basically you will see the drawing okay you can also make it white if you need okay so we have uh, this few colors now if you want to add other colors i'll also show you how to add even if you want to change the colors i'll also show you how to change okay now how it works is very simple you just have to take your hand in this way and if your forefinger and your thumb they are connected together in this way so if you can see my forefinger and my thumb they are connected in and in this way if i just rotate my hand it's not going to draw anything okay only if my forefinger is in this way like they are not connected forefinger and arm then it's going to draw and as you can see i can draw as i want okay and similarly next if i have to change the color i can again like uh, do this kind of click uh, like click kind of like my forearm uh, forefinger and my uh, thumb i can just join them and then i can just go to any color let's say in this case i'll just go for the green okay and i can choose the green color and next i can just come and now i have green okay in this way it's going to work similarly i can choose other colors too next i have if i have to clear what i have to do i have to just go to clear Okay, and it will be cleared so in this way is going to work and as you can see you can actually see my whole hand is getting recognized here okay and it, you can also see the landmarks and the lines I'll, I'll tell you how those things are working so this is how it's working now as it's raspberry pi obviously the fps is less but if you are also we are actually drawing in open so that's why also the speed will reduce a little bit but if you use in your physical computer a uh, better system then obviously you will get a better frame rate but even in raspberry pi I'm, i will not say that is that slow okay but what is the reason we are using in raspberry pi is like uh, basically uh, we can actually connect to any display and then we can do this kind of thing okay that is the advantage of using raspberry pi and also what you can do is maybe uh, we can just have a blank screen like this if we have and then we we are not showing the showing these frames and we can just draw so those kind of setup also can be created okay so now i'm going to just uh, stop it now i'll explain you how the code is working so let me just explain from here okay so here we are using media pipe so we don't need to so i'll just zoom it so that you can see it better so i hope you can yes i guess this is good okay yes okay so as we are using media pipe here we don't need to do any kind of training or thing media pipe will do everything for us so media pipe is basically developed by google and to know more about media pipe you can go to their page so media pipe have many machine learning based uh, using media pipe you can make uh, many machine learning based projects so we are just using the hand landmark part of them here now what happens is basically using this particular module we can recognize the hands and also we are we are going to get the points of our hands so this is basically the landmark landmarks so if you see this is this is our hand so for every finger we have four points in this way and also we have a uh, here basically we have a point center point okay so this is how whenever it will see it will see a hand it is going to recognize all these points and based on the position of these points we can actually recognize so if you remember basically uh, in the demo that my forefinger uh, so uh, yeah my forefinger and my thumb when they are connected basically these two points the distance between these two points will be very less so based on that we can actually detect so i'll show you in the code but this is overall how media pipe works so whenever in using media pipe we can just uh, process our uh, images like hand images and it is going to give us these points and using these points we can actually plot them in this way so that's the overall uh, how it basically works now coming to the code so the code is little big and i would say it's little complicated but i'll explain you the whole thing so very first thing 
uh, it's importing the libraries so cv2 numpy media pipe and collections so cv2 numpy and media pipe these three things you need to install collection will be by default in python so you don't need to install next here we are creating actually four list for four colors so blue b points mean blue color green point means like g points mean green points r points means red points y points means yellow points so here we are basically these are basically lists of double ended queues as you can see d queues okay and also the d queues are maximum length of uh, 1024 okay now why you are, we are using dq here now the reason is as is a paint application like dqs are very good data structure for paint applications okay and the reason is because in paint application when we are drawing uh basically we are storing the points of our we are storing the points of our the co coordinates of the brush or in this case our finger now the points number of points can increase a lot and that's why uh, it can take a very huge memory but with dqs we have a limited space and also uh, what happens that if somehow the dq get full in that case we can add uh, we can actually remove the old points and add new points in the dq okay we can actually add the right points and we can add in the left side okay so if you're not understanding the dq part that's fine but the main thing is dq we are using that uh, using because dq is a very good dq is a very good data structure when coming to the paint applications so that's why we are using a list of dqs okay next part is what we have uh, and list of dqs why because when we are drawing so uh, let me just again show you here just i'll just again run this code i'll show you a very small thing so what's happening is when i am drawing here so let's say this is a line so this is a dq okay so i am still uh, drawing it now i stop drawing so whenever i'm stop drawing now what so basically this is uh, this dq will be stored in the blue points b points in that list now this is one dq now i am not drawing so it is going to create a new dq okay and now if i again draw another line now this line is going to sh uh, save in the need new dq okay so that is the concept so still the point i am drawing it is going to save the points so save the coordinates in the old dq but whenever i am creating a new line it's going to create a new dq okay so there are multiple dqs so now i'll just exit from here go back to the code so multiple dqs and this blue index green index red and yellow index this is why this is to point the dq so i'll first like draw a line so that will be the first dq so blue index will be zero next i create another drawing so the blue index will also increase in similar way the blue index will going to point the current dq okay so the recent dq uh, next here we are going to define the colors so this is basically blue blue uh, green red and yellow four colors so you can add more colors into it if you want okay and the color index color index is why so that we can know that which color currently are painting so if color index is zero that means that we have to paint blue color index one means we have to print uh, we have to draw green color index three uh, color index two means we have to draw uh, like uh, red so zero one two three in this way we have to change the color index okay next year we have draw square with white border now this is just for the drawing part so drawing part means that uh, uh, if you see here just a moment if you just again i run it so you will see that we have boxes here so this boxes white boxes so th that function is to create these boxes okay next i'll go back to the code and let it run here next we so this is basically drawing the white borders next so there are two windows one is the paint window and one is the frame so this is the paint window this is the paint window and this is basically the frames okay so here uh where here we are basically drawing here we are basically drawing the rectangle the paint uh, the color rectangles in the paint window okay and here we are drawing the white boxes in the paint window here we are putting the text in the paint window so this is the paint window so basically we are putting this boxes green box red box yellow box next we are uh, drawing this uh, white borders okay and then we are putting the text so that part we are doing very simple next uh, we have we are creative we are using this mp hands module so from the mp dot solutions dot hands so this is from media pipe and we are creating the hands object so the hands object we are basically creating so using this hand object we are going to uh, getting the landmarks okay here we are using that max number of hands should be one and a detection confidence we have given one 
Next, we are capturing the frames. Now, as I'm using a webcam, this is the way how to initialize it. So cvd.video capture zero. This was zero is my uh, webcam number, you can say. Okay. Now here uh, we are capturing. So here we are capturing and we are also getting the frame shape. Next, we are flipping. So horizontal, we are doing a horizontal flip. Why? Because you know, when camera captures our image, it gets flipped. So that's why, so that we can uh, see the image properly when drawing that's why we are horizontal we are doing a horizontal flip next we are just doing some color conversion bgr to rgb not a big deal next the same rectangle same white square box and same text we are going to put in the uh in the frame okay this is the frame where our image is and after that here we are going to hands dot process frame uh, frame rgb so here we are basically processing the frame we are capturing. We are processing through the hands object. So in the results, we are going to getting the landmarks. And if the landmarks are there, we are iterating through the landmarks. And then here we are doing something. We are finding out LMX, LMY, which is basically we are uh, that coordinates we got from the uh, media pie. We are multiplying them with 640 and 480. Why like this? Now, the reason of that is because whenever we are getting, so let me show you, whenever in media pipe, whenever my hand is here, let's say in the middle, uh, let's say something, let's say it at exact middle, media pipe is going to return the coordinates at 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. Why? Because media pipes gives us coordinates in a range of 0 to 1. Okay. So it is good 0 0.5. 0 0.5 okay so this point maybe this point is uh, the top uh, left point it is maybe 0 comma 0 and at the very bottom right we have 1 1 comma 1 okay but in this way when we are drawing we cannot draw in using those coordinates we need the physical coordinate we need the coordinates according to the screen now as the frame is of 614 to 480 that's why we are going to multiply the coordinates we got from media vibe with 640, 480 so that we got the coordinates according to the screen. Okay. And then we are appending the coordinates in the landmarks. Now, here is a very important thing. Here, uh, here we are drawing the landmarks. So basically this part. So if you see the points it's drawing and also the connections. So that line is doing that. And next part is we are getting the four finger coordinates. Also the four fingers we are making at cent we are making the four finger as center. So center coordinates are similar to four finger coordinates. And also we are getting the thumb coordinates. Now you may say how we are getting. You see, you remember the image I show you? Here if you see the four finger top, this is eight and the thumb top, it is four. If you see here, we are basically capture, we are basically here saving the eight coordinate uh, like the, eighth element 0 and 1 to get x y and thumb 0 and 1 okay in this way in this uh, in this way we are getting the coordinates of the four finger top and thumb top okay and next uh, basically cv2 circle so here we are creating a green circle if you see i have a green circle in my four finger top this is basically the brush okay now, if we want, so if you want to maybe you instead of four finger, you want to use any other finger, you can use uh, that point so that you can do in this way. Okay. Then what we are doing, we are basically checking the distance between the thumb and center. So the thumb top and the center top. This is because the click thing whenever and we are checking if the distance is less than 30. So that means I'm checking. This is my, this is my, here is my thumb and here is my four finger. If the distance between the top points are zero, uh, less than 30, in that in that case, I'm not going to draw any points. So that's why I'm detecting it. Okay. Next, if it is less than zero, then I'm going to create a new DQ. Why? I told you previously that here the list of DQ is just to save the history of the painting. Okay. And that's why when uh, it is like this, uh, basically, uh, I am doing this and then again, I'm starting a new line. It is basically creating a new DQ. And as it is creating a new DQ, that's why it also will increase the index. So you see the blue index, it is increasing every index. So whenever I am drawing something new, it is going to create a new DQ. Okay. Now, if uh, the center, that means my four finger is uh, the Y coordinate is less than 90. And the x coordinate, 
basically is between this range or this range or this range or this range that means basically i'm basically pointing to those boxes so if between this range that means i'm basically uh, clicking on the clear button if between this range basically means the color blue again this range means green this range means red this range means yellow so if you see here basically this is 90 okay so it will check if my uh, fourth finger top point is below 90 and then it will check the ranges so if between this range that means i'm clicking on clear this range means blue this range means green this range means red this range means yellow okay and so we have a else here where is this else belong to okay yeah. so if it is uh, if the thumb distance between thumb and center is less than 30 that means don't draw if it is in between this range that means i'm selecting the menu and else if it is not in this range that means i'm obviously drawing in that case what i'm doing based on the color index from where we are getting the color index from this menu so no, not menu from the yeah boxes you can say so whenever whatever the box i have selected last based on that i'll have the color index so initially it's zero and that's why you will see whenever initially i will draw i will get the color zero because initially the color index is zero okay so based on the color index if it's zero then i'm going to add uh, that point in my blue points so in my b points similarly if it is green in green points red red points yellow yellow points okay and as it is a dq we can see we can append in the left so whenever we are getting a new point we are appending that point in the left and if the queue is full the queue is full in that case automatically it is going to remove the rightmost points okay that is the advantage of using the dq that it saves the memory so if it is not a dq limited range like limited, uh, like limited size dq in that case there is a chance that it may take a huge memory so by using dq we are eliminating that thing and next if so what is this else for this else for if there are no landmarks detected in that case what we are doing in that case again so that means if my hand is not there so for example now my hand is there and i am creating a dq of b power so i'm creating a dq in the b points now my hand is not there again i'm going to create a new dq because that means why because now i'm going to create a new line i'm going to create a new line so that's why i need a new dq okay so that's why we are creating new dqs in each of the points okay and finally here what we are doing now we have the points so we are saving the b points g points r points or y points in the points okay in the points list and we are iterating through the point list and based on the uh, point based on the coordinates and also the color index we are drawing the lines both in the frame and paint window so you know this is the frame and this is the paint window so in both of them we are drawing based on the uh, coordinates okay based on the coordinates in this points okay so and i'm not getting into this so this is very simple so based on so it's basically giving the x and y coordinates and with the color index and uh, line width okay you can play with these things so in this way it inputting and finally it is showing both of the frames and if you press q it is going to break okay so this is how it's basically working so the main important thing is uh, understanding how the dq thing is working and also how this landmark thing is working this is as simple as that. and if you understood these two things you can actually customize the whole project and you can create according to your needs you can change anything instead of this finger you can use any other finger you can add any number of color palettes you can uh, add uh, you can use different colors of your needs okay and anything okay even this click thing that uh for in this one my thumb and four fingers should be together you can use something else because now you know the logic you know the, how the code this is working so you can change accordingly okay so this is how the whole project is basically working okay okay so before finishing the video i also want to show you how you can run the same setup in your computer so in my case i'm using my mac but a similar thing you can do in your windows or linux so I'm using PyCharm. So similarly, you can use whatever editor you prefer. So in case of PyCharm, I can say you the installation is very simple. So what you really have to do is so here I have just pasted the whole code as you can see painter.py and uh, what I'll do is you have to in case of PyCharm, what you have to do is you have to go to PyCharm file from their new project setup from their preferences for new project. And from there, you have to go to Python interpreter and there you have to select which Python virtual environment you are using. So as you can see in my case all the libraries are already installed so 
here uh, cv2 is installed and media pipe is also installed and numpy is installed okay so for example if you have to install media pipe is very simple you just search for media pipe and you will see media pipe will get it okay so in my case it's already installed similarly numpy if you have to install you can just search for uh, numpy and you will get numpy so as you can see numpy is also installed and similarly you can install open cv so you can just write oh, uh, just a minute you can simply write open cv uh, python so as you can see here we have so it will be python open cv so python open cv so as you can see it is python open cv uh, so this i think this is not the one we are looking for so i think open cv yes this is one open cv country python okay this one you really need to install and if you have installed all these libraries you are good to go it will take few minutes i guess one or two minutes to install all the libraries now once you are done installing libraries you are ready to run the code so now i'll just simply run the code and as you can see here obviously the resolution of this my mac uh, front camera is very high so it's uh, it's i think uh, 1280 into 720 so and that's why here you can see the window size is also bigger okay so here if i just show you as you can see this is how it's working so as you can see it's very like it's comparatively it's better than raspberry pi obviously because here we are using a better cpu and better processing unit okay and as you can see the fps is very high so it's fully real time and as you can see even if i have to draw something i can actually draw it so let's i have to write a rigid so i can just write it in this way okay okay so i'm not a very good i'm not that very good in drawing but yes this is how you can actually draw and you can see it's very simple you can change colors in this way you can choose different colors so it's very seamless here okay So this is how you can actually use it and if you see okay and another thing also if i just show you so let's say if you draw anything something like this okay and then if i just show you in this paint and you will also get the similar drawing okay so this is how it's working in mac and i hope in windows or linux also we'll get similar speed so it works really good in 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 like a full computer but yeah in raspberry pi you will have limitations but if you use in a pc it will be flawless okay so that's all so this is all about this video guys i hope you have learned something from this video so if it is at is the case please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that i can make more videos like this so many more projects are coming so see you in the very next video